Hi guys, welcome back to The Curly Reader. Today, I am finally going to wrap up and share with you my thoughts of the five books that I read that had been on my TBR the longest. I started this project back in June with the intention of it only taking one, maybe two months. It has now been four and a half months. So, you know, life. But I finally have completed the five books that had been on my Goodreads TBR for far too long. Um, I will link my like announcement video down below where I went through what five books they were and how long they had been on my TBR. Today I'm going to wrap up my thoughts on all five books, what I thought about them, the order I read them, that sort of thing. So let's get into it. So the first book that I finished for this project was Orphan Train by Christina Baker Klein. I ended up buddy reading this one with one of my subscribers, so that was really fun. Um, first time that I was able to do that. Um, but this book, I ended up giving four stars. It was okay. It was definitely not what I was expecting at all. Um, the premise of it was, or what I had been told is that it was about an orphan train that would take orphans from the New England area out to the Midwest in this like during the Great Depression time um, and take them out there and try to get them adopted into families out in the Midwest. And it was about a little girl who was on the orphan train. And that is true, but a very, very small part of this book is actually about the orphan train. The majority of this book is this little girl's journey after she leaves the train, what happens to her from house to house, foster care, adoption, that sort of thing. Um, it was very good. It was just not quite what I was expecting, but it was definitely an enjoyable read and I had a really, really good time reading it. So that one got four stars. The next book that I finished was The Green Glass Sea by Ellen Klagis, I think is how you say the last name. Um, and this follows a little girl during World War II whose mother has left. She only has her father and her father is a scientist out on site at the Manhattan Project in, was it Arizona? New Mexico, I think it was. Um, but and it just kind of follows her experience being on site there and the secrecy and the areas they weren't allowed to go to and it's a middle grade novel it was really really good but i only ended up giving it three stars because the storyline itself just wasn't great it was insightful as far as what the kids were going through during that time but there really wasn't a whole lot of plot there wasn't a whole lot of story to be told and it just kind of fell flat for me. So that one was only a three star read. After that, I read The Cinderella Pack by Sarah Strohmeyer, I think. And this one I thought was kind of a, it's a contemporary, but my thought was that it was about this like girl and guy and they kind of made a pact that if they hadn't gotten married by a certain age that they would get married kind of like um my best friend's wedding and that whole premise that was not what this book was about at all and had I read the synopsis I probably would have taken it off a long time I don't know why I never read the synopsis I just thought in my head oh yeah I know what that one's about and never really looked into it which was really dumb on my part now that I'm thinking about it this book was about this group of ladies our main character and a couple of her friends who are all overweight and they decide that they are going to lose weight and so it is about the main character who kind of runs into this guy who's very handsome and he ends up like seeking her out and showing interest in her even though she's overweight and undesirable and it just kind of goes through her like Weight Watchers journey and her like intention in losing weight and how that eventually like turns her into this girl that once I don't know it was just it was not what I thought it was going to be it was a lot about fat shame and body shaming and I came this close to DNFing it multiple times I probably should have to be completely honest with you 
But I was like, no, I'm going to finish this. I'm going to finish this. And I ended up giving it two stars. It wasn't like I say it's, you know, I'm bringing up all the bad things about it. It wasn't as horrific as I'm making it sound because I know it sounds really bad. Um, it was not that horrific. It just was not good at all. And I didn't understand the storyline. They ended up making a Lifetime movie of this book, which I also do not understand. I don't get it. I really wish I would have taken this off of my TBR a long time ago and that it hadn't been part of this because I this is one that I just wish I wouldn't have read because it wasn't worth my time. But anyway, that was two stars. And then after that, things kind of went downhill even more. After that, I started reading All the Light We Cannot See by Anthony Doerr and ended up DNFing this one. I, that's how far I got in it. And I was so bored reading this. I just could not, it is a, I mean, it's a lengthy book. I could not make myself read it anymore. Because at least with the Cinderella Pact, I was getting through it really quickly. It didn't take me that long to read. This was taking forever, and I couldn't make myself do it anymore. I was so bored. This is a very beloved book. There are so many people that really, really love this book. Apparently, it's the winner of the Pulitzer Prize. I'm just noticing that now. But so many people love this book. I'm not one of those people. I was bored out of my gourd. The authorial voice was just so monotonous and dry. It is about these two kids. One is a not is a German boy that really likes tinkering with radios. He ends up joining the Nazi army and he likes messing with radios. And then the other little kid is a little girl who is blind and likes playing or um, her uncle makes miniatures like uh, miniature models of different things and ends up with like a jewel in France I think like one of their beloved uh, country treasures in our national treasures in France and he ends up being in possession of it when they try to hide things from the Nazis and so he hides it in a miniature I think and then she ends up getting involved somehow. I don't know. That's as far as I got in it. And then I quit. So I did not rate it. I don't rate books that I DNF because yeah, I just don't. So anyway, that was a no go for me. And then after that, I read The Book Thief by Marcus Suzak, which is another very, very well loved World War II historical fiction. This one was very different. Um, I had tried starting the audiobook of this multiple times in the past and have never been able to get into it. I would get like an hour and a half in and just be like, nope, this isn't working. I'm going to have to read this one physically. So I ended up starting it physically and got, I probably got a good chunk in. And then I switched over to the audiobook and was able to follow it fine after that. So sometimes that's what it takes when you're doing audiobooks. If you can't get into the audiobook, pick it up physically and get into the book, and then you can go to, back to the audiobook and be able to follow it. And that's how I was able to get through this one. The this one is just different though. The uh, this book is narrated by death. Like death is a character, and that's who the narrator is. Um, and so it's just a very different voice. I don't know if I would ever read anything else by Marcus Suzak. This book was very good, but I wasn't a huge fan of the writing style. Um, the other thing that I really liked about this book is that the narrator would say, you know, this is what's going, to, this person will die in this many months. And maybe you don't like that I'm telling you that, but it's not really about how it ends. It's about the journey. And then he'll tell you about the journey. And I really liked that. There were definitely parts of this that got me teary. I didn't start sobbing, but I definitely got teary um, at the end of this. And it was just really, really good. Um, I know a lot of people say like this is their absolute favorite book of all time. It has forever changed their life. 
And I don't necessarily think it was that impactful for me, but it was very good. And I'm definitely glad that I finally got around to reading this. So that one I gave four stars. So out of all of these, I ended up with two four star books, a three star book, a two star book, and a DNF. So no new favorites out of the group, but I am proud of myself that I was able to knock those five books off of my Goodreads TBR. Um, and yeah, so that is all of my thoughts about those books. So anyway, I hope that you enjoyed this. Um, if you have read any of these, please let me know down below what your thoughts are. And also let me know what is the book that has been on your TBR the longest and what has prevented you from picking it up. So yeah, other than that, I hope that you enjoyed this and I hope that you stick around and subscribe. And until next time, see ya. Mm -hmm.